So, so then you showed me yeah. where your evidence came from. Do you mind quickly showing me the evidences that you, you showed last time? Okay. And I want to misquote you. So the first evidence was from the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I said in the New Testament, you have the name of uh, Jesus in the Greek, which was used for uh, Jesus. And you also had the Greek Jesus again, which was used for the companion of Moses. So they had the same name. Yeah. which was my argumentation sure. so my argument so that's one one piece of evidence that you provided yes and then i said we had uh, josephus okay where did you get the josephus information from that he believed that uh, the name of isos is actually from hebrew eshua well we would first of all have to understand if you use the name isus there's only limited possibilities of what names it can come from. So, for example, when you said uh, if someone is called Unga Bunga mm -hmm. or whatever, whatever, if one per person A is called Unga Bunga, person B is called Unga Bunga, and person C is called Jinga Janga, you would logically conclude that A and B would have had the same name, and C had a different name. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't use two different names use the same name for two different people if they had different names. But you're using logic now, in terms yes. of actual deductive ac actual evidence from Josephus, yes. because you also showed something from the Brill Encyclopedia of the Quran. Yes. Did you read the whole section, not whole section, the whole article, yes. which is about Jesus and the relevant section about his name yes. from the Encyclopedia? Yes. Okay. And it said about that his name Muslim scholars, what? They, you know, it's perplexing, you know, it's perplexing, isn't it? Yes. What did it say about Josephus there? What did, jo did they quote Josephus? Yes, they did. And what did Josephus? So, basically, in... Because he didn't say that last time. So, okay. what, 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 what did Josephus actually... So, in the say? old, in Hebrew, or old mm -hmm. Hebrew, because there was no vowelization, uh -huh. you had the consonants which is where we get etymology from. So there were, he, Josephus referenced three other people in the Bible whose name had the same consonants. So there's a possibility it could have been one of four. Mm -hmm. First of all, like if the name Jesus is used. Mm -hmm. But then what they go to confirm is because the Bible clarifies the meaning of his name, the others can be discounted. Because the consonants mm -hmm. for Yeshua is uh, is uh, y uh, is a yod shin uh, so and so so so, 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 so Josephus yes. the evidence he provided for the name yes. let's read from this encyclopedia yes okay so this is probably what you read right rather than the encyclopedia article so okay. there was a Wikipedia article is this what you're reading from. Nope. Because the I actually have the I actually have the Brill Encyclopedia. Yeah, so do I. So okay. when you when you read the Brill Encyclopedia, what did it actually say? So let me read it to you. Okay, from the encyclopedia itself. Okay. Here. So about Josephus, right? Josephus this is point number three. Yes. Josephus used the Greek name Isus to denote three people mentioned in the Bible whose Hebrew names were not Eshua. Yes. So now we see already last time, yes. you have been very selective okay. and very misrepresenting Josephus. Okay. So Josephus used Yusus okay. to refer to other people okay. whose name was not Yeshua. Yes. Very clearly this is what he's saying. Okay. They're not even, he says, um, let me continue the reading the text. Josephus used the Greek name Isus yep. to denote three people mentioned in the Bible whose Hebrew names were not Yeshua, Yahushua or Yahushua. They were Saul's son, Ishvi, anglicized as Ishvi in the RSV of 1 Samuel 1449. Yeah. The Levite Abishua, mentioned in 1 Chronicles 6 4, etc. And Ishwa, the son of Asher, anglicized as Ishva in the RSV of Genesis 46 17. So the Josephus that you used to provide evidence for your support for your argument is actually saying this is not an evidence at all because Josephus used the name Isus 
referring to other people who were called what? Abishua, Ishvi, Ishwa. Does it sound like Eshua? It's based on the consonant. Wait, wait. Does it sound like Eshua? It's based on the consonant. Does it sound like Eshua? So say your question again. When I pronounce this name, yes. Isus, I want to know what the actual name was. Yes. So now he says these names are actually from yes. Ishwi. Yeah. Does it sound like Eshua? It doesn't need to. Abishua? Does it sound like Eshua? Ishwa? Does it sound like Yeshua? It doesn't. This is what Brill Encyclopedia itself says. Josephus used the name Isus, referring to other people who were not Yeshua, Yehoshua, or Yehoshua. Yes. So Josephus' evidence goes against you. In fact, Josephus consolidates my point where it says, when we have this Greek name, Isus, is it a translation from Ishvi? Is there a translation from Ishwi or Ishvi or Abishwa or Ishwa or Ishva or Yeshua? So can you be certain? Yes. Now if we now continue the conclusion of Brilliant Encyclopedia, what do they say by way of conclusion? I'm sure you've read it, right? But you hide, you hid that information last time. Selective quotation. By way of conclusion, it is worth summarizing the salient features of the debate about the origins of the Quranic form of Jesus' name. It is not certain that Jesus' original name was Yeshua. Okay. You want to have a look at it? I know. You know. And yet, you somehow bring brilliant Encyclopedia as an evidence which goes against you. Now, this is my point. So, the evidence that you provided is an evidence against you. Okay. You asked me, name bring me some other scholars okay. who support my view because what was my view i am not certain which is it totally in line with brinic secretary says we are not certain in the debate what the name is issues coming from now when we go and check what do we find clement of alexandria he considered the name issues to be of actual greek origin not a translation of the name from hebrew eshua do you know clement of alexandria very well known scholarly of your historical tradition of Christianity. Whether you've removed him after 500 years to be a church father, regardless of that, he is a well known scholar in early Christianity, right? Clement of Alexandria. What about the other person? Is it Cyril of. His, uh, let me show you who it is. Saint Cyril of Jerusalem. They consider this is in Catholic Encyclopedia as well as in the Wikipedia article that you can get this link from. So I went to directly the Catholic Encyclopedia, I went to the information in the Brills Encyclopedia, and I found that yes, there are other scholars who consider the name Isus is actually a Greek name. What are you going to say about that? No, the name is not a translation of any other Hebrew name. This is what Clement of Alexander is arguing. So it is not a translation of Yeshua or Yahushua. So now you have a big, big problem. Is Isus, is Isus a translation of Ishvi, Ashvi, Abishua, Ishwa, Eshua, Eshua, Ehoa Shua, right? You have no certainty, just like what I claim. You have no way of determining what it is. Okay. So now, let me address all your Go points. ahead. First of all, um, yeah, you are correct in that Yesus can be used for other names. Firstly, when we go to the scripture, it tells you the meaning behind the name that God will save. This is the same, so it comes from Yeho saves. So the Bible itself gives you the meaning of the name. That's why when you look at the Greek, you know it's not the other names because every name has a different meaning. What you're saying, does this name sound like that name? That's what we call homophones and you're making a, a mistake. For example, if I say knight with a K and knight with an N, they sound dissimilar, but they have different meanings. Now, if I go and write that in an English uh, test and I say at night time with a K, I will fail my exam. So your point that it should sound dissimilar is actually not a point itself. It just has to translate to the same. So that's why when I originally told you that in the, in the Greek, they did not have the letter Shin or the letter Y. So they had to use an iota instead. So now going back to your point of Josephus, uh, just for the cameras, 
I'll show you as well. That is the rendition in Aramaic, this word here. That's the Aramaic, that word right there. So the funny thing is, Josephus was actually translated into Syriac and Arabic. So now, if you can see here, that is the word I've highlighted. For Yeshua. You see, early church fathers, this is actually the, Josephus' quote in uh, Syriac. So I'm just showing you again, that is the word that I've highlighted. So we've had translation it. of what to what? This is in Syriac, which is uh, old format. No, translation of what? Of the name that this, this particular this, text is. Of yeah, what? this is a, a testimony of uh, Flavidium, which is Josephus, okay. where he where he wrote what, the text that historians refer to mm -hmm. that he mentioned Jesus. It was. And translated, when is this translation from? Which century? This is from the. They believe it's as early as the uh, 5th century. So now, he, Mansour will say, well, how do we know? To it's very unlikely that they would have translated it into another language without actually understanding what the translation was. 5th century, also, 500 years later. Have okay. The Arabic text, which again, I've highlighted the word. Translated okay, when? Wait, 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 wait. This was in the 10th uh, century. 10th century. century? Yes. So you have. 1,000 years later, right? That's okay. Fine. Just so you can see the evidence, because this is the same text of Josephus. That's the word Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Now, so a translation from 500 years later and a translation, okay. you know, 1,000 years later now, is an evidence. Now we have multiple sources confirming the same thing. Pretty much, you didn't. Maybe you might have one or two disagreements, as uh, Mansour might say. Now I want you to look at this person because in uh, biblical literature you obviously have the Greek. You have the Peshitta. The Peshitta is in Syriac, which is Middle Aramaic. So it's very close to what Jesus would have spoken. It's a more of an advanced reason. So actually, before I spoke to Mansour, I want everyone just to see this. His name is Sebastian Brock. His name is Sebastian Brock. He's, he's a scholar at Oxford University. Anyone can go and uh, Google, Google his name. It says Sebastian Paul Brock. FBA is generally acknowledged as the foremost academic in the field of Syriac today. I actually emailed him about this. Okay. Here's my email. You can see the email too. And I'll put read it on what your, he says. Because I asked email. him where did the name come from. Yeah. He said, the Syriac forms of the name have nothing directly to do with the Greek, Jesus, but will have come from early Syriac speaking Christians by the way of Jewish Aramaic, so presumably reached the old Syriac and Peshitta gospel by oral tradition. The name will have been very familiar long before anyone thought of translating the Greek gospels into Syriac. Since vocalization signs were not introduced at all about the 7th or 8th century, there is no way of knowing about how the consonant YSH uh, w, which is the, the continents that I've been telling you about, were pronounced by early Syriac Christians, Syriac speaking Christians. But the time of the vocalization, the Eastern and Western Syriac traditions of pronunciation had diverged. So one had Isho and the other had uh, Yeshua. So now we have one of the foremost scholars of Syriac language and I even had this giving before, his opinion rather than an evidence. I spoke to man as usual. last week, but I didn't need to bring out evidence. This is the one of the foremost scholars mm -hmm. on Syriac language. If Mansour wants to bring me a counter uh, uh, scholar who can then disprove and say what his alternate name would have been, I will be happy to discuss that evidence. But we have confirmation from an Oxford scholar, one of the most leading uh, scholars. He said the name did not come from the Greek because. When we talk about source primacy, which I was talking about the other week, is that uh, Peshitta tries to claim source primacy. They say they got it from Jesus directly. But scholars have noticed that there are certain forms, or certain phrases in the Peshitta that would have only come from the direct, um, from the Greek. So most scholars will agree that the Peshitta came from the Greek, but he's confirmed the name didn't even come from the Greek. It's come through oral tradition. Okay, so let me can, respond yes. to this. So as the habitual 
yes. way we see the Christians, missionaries bring along evidence, yes. nothing different. Okay. So you're bringing an opinion of a scholar. No, Maybe. Are you going to? Are you going to? Are you going to? Are you going to let me speak, or are you going to? what we call a fallacy. Are you going to let me speak, both of you? It's a, let me, Can you stop your camera, man? Let me just finish my point. Excuse it, me. It, no, let me just finish my point. End of discussion. No, 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 no. Look, look. I let you speak, and now I'm responding, and somehow. Okay. You're not happy with that. You're not no, comfortable no, no, with no, no, that. Right. Oh, so as I said, 15 yes. minutes, remember, we agreed yeah, yeah, on a discussion. Yeah. Yes. Nearly 15 minutes yes. coming yes. towards end. Yes. So we need to wrap it up very quickly. Okay. So the evidence that you're bringing, again, okay. an opinion of a renowned scholar. Remember, at the very outset from last time we had a discussion, okay. it is not the opinions of a scholar that it's counted. Okay. Evidence is not opinions of scholars. Okay. Evidence has to be real evidence. So where, which manuscript? Which inscription? That's what, that is what evidence is. So you didn't provide anything from that scholar because I can, like you said, oh, find me one scholar, okay. name me one scholar okay. that agrees with my position, which I did today, okay. Clement of Alexandria. I didn't give you one, I gave two. Okay. No, I didn't give two, I gave three. Cyril of, Jer Saint Cyril of Jerusalem, and I gave and Josephus, what, what was it? you are interrupting, okay. and even Josephus himself. That yes, the name Jesus, yes. which you think okay. the Greek name is from Yeshua, is actually not a certain name where it's coming from. You okay. talk about only consonantal skeleton, but actually, if you look at it, he's translated this name from Ishvi, Ashvi, Abishua, and a few others. So, going really refuting your claim that the name Josephus mentions, Jesus is coming from. Yeshua or Yahushua, when he himself mentions other people other than these names using the word Jesus. So that refutes your claim altogether. Secondly, when you say, give me a scholar, are you saying that scholar in Oxford knows better than Clement of Alexandria? So when Clement of Alexandria is used and saying, he says, this is a Greek name, this is the name of Christ in the original Greek, not from any other. So it's not a translated name, it's actually originated within Greek and he gives you the Greek form where it's coming from if you were to bother to check. So now I have given you counter evidence by scholars of the past. We are closer to the time, closer to the time to tell you Jesus is not the name coming from Eshua or Nehoshua. So instead of giving me evidence, what you've given me again, what look, a work that has been translated 500 years later when already Christianity have accepted by their traditions that name is this Yeshua or 1000 years later in an Arabic translation this name is Yeshua these are already what we call popular belief within the people who are translating but if we go back to the time closer to the time the time we're referring to at the time Christ was alive of course, we want to know what's the original Aramaic, Aramaic, that he was given his name by his mother. You think it's Hebrew, but you have no evidence for it because you have a Greek writer in the 80s or something writing and saying this is what his name is. That is what I'm saying is you have no evidence. It's just opinions and suggestions. That is why the name either Yeshua, Yeshua and so on, these are all a guesswork. So as I started from the very beginning, last time I met you on this issue, your belief, which is based on your evidence, but your evidence base is what? All guesswork and assumptions. So I am consistently saying, the scholars are with me. You cannot be certain, because there's no certainty about what this original name is, as clearly encyclopedia of the Quran by the Brill publishers are clearly saying. And they say possibility exists that it could be uh, Isa or so on and so forth. So the point is, I think it's established beyond the shadow of doubt by using the evidence that you tried to support, which goes against you that yes, the name about Isa -Islam is not Jesus, Latinized, because that's not what his mom called him. It's not even Jesus, because it's a Greek translation. What was the name given by his mom? You don't know. I rest my case.
No. Do you have anything else to say Mansell within the next made, two, three minutes? Man Mansell has made many fallacies in his argumentation. Two, three minutes. The first, the first you take all, the last word. He said that if there's no manuscripts, therefore it's unreliable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when we go to Islamic literature, especially the Hadith, we cannot find anything written. But they will use an argumentation of chains of narration. But then, by Mansell's own standards, we should reject this and the meaning of his name was. We have nine different authors of the New Testament. So by uh, in Greek, Man Mansour's argumentation. Not the original language we're discussing. Mansour's argumentation. None of the people at the time knew what the name translated as. They're all ignorant. We have all the over 50 Gnostic gospels. They're all ignorant, according to Mansour, who were close to the time. We have. The Josephus translated into other languages. They, from their ignorance as well, they've mistranslated his Yeah, Clement now, Alexander was ignorant. Now, now, Cyril are ignorant. Now he's cutting in. No, no, can two minutes. Two minutes is over. No, no, discussion is over. No, no, no. Can I finish? My, you you can, said I can I round up. No, I'm rounding up. Two, three up. minutes? I'm rounding so up. So in one minute, can I, can round I up. finish? Round up in one minute. Can I finish? Of course. I said, remember what I said? In two, three minutes. Let me finish. Finish in one minute. Let me round up. That's it. So now we have seen many Felicia's points by Mansour. Yeah. We, he's now rejecting one of the foremost scholars of Syriac language and the Peshitta. These people do not do PhDs in nothing. They go and do their research. They don't make an opinion. That's what the false assertion Mansour is making. This is the foremost scholar who has done, written numerous papers on the Peshitta. He knows about the tradition. If Mansour wants to bring me an alternative name for Yeshua, we will discuss it. Because the original point I said to him is where did the name Isa come from? So if he can provide me an alternative name from the uh, Greek, uh, from the um, Hebrew, which translates into the Arabic, then we can discuss it. But at the m moment, he's just okay. given me straw man That's and it. red herrings. Okay, so, so we've heard, heard, heard you. He, we have now no, no, seen we've heard. that I've given all my evidence. We have the Talmud, we have the Bible, we have all the Gnostic Gospels, we have uh, most of the uh, early Suggestions text fathers, and guess we what? have the Peshitta, we have oral traditions. He's saying, based on a very few Now it's become subjects. very few. Oh, emotive subject. Look, look, now, the discussion is over, okay. the discussion is over. Yes. So there's no need to further make any points. Okay. So what you've asked for, I provided, which okay. refutes you completely. There's no point any further discussion about going back again, oh, Talmud and this and this. So, nice talking to you, paper boy. Okay. Maybe one day you'll as, be known with your real name. See, he was unable to provide me an alternative no, no, no. Why, why, why are you even going back again? This is what we call... No, what he's doing yeah. is okay. an attack. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so I can't... Because As you can see, refuted black and white. Yeah, yeah. For example, if I say the moon is made of peace okay. in the centre, yeah, yeah. no one can disagree with me. It doesn't mean my point is right. Okay. This is why we have a fallacy called the argument from ignorance. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah, ma ba'd. Just to summarize very quickly, so I had a discussion with this particular gentleman two, three weeks ago, I think, um, about the name of Isa alayhi salam, making claims that, you know, the name is coming from Yeshua and Yehoshua from the original Hebrew. So my point was, what did the mother of Christ name him? What was the original name? Do you even have a clue? Was it in Aramaic? Was it in Hebrew? Was it in Greek? So you have no evidence for this. Um, Quran uses the word Isa. Now the Arab Christians use the word Yasuq. And in the Christian tradition, they have the Greek writings calling Isus. The question is, what is his real name? So he came along and said, oh, the, the real name is actually from Yeshua and Yahushua. But what we have dismantled so far, the evidence that he provides are from fifth century, 500 years later, or 1000 years later, where an Oxford PhD scholar who thinks, oh, it, it must have been like this. That is not an evidence. Evidence should be contemporary. That is what we were discussing. Do you have any contemporary evidence, contemporaneous to the time when Christ is living, to say for surety and certainty that was the name given to Isa alayhi salam, rather than a document written by Matthew, you know, much, much later, even in what works we have is in Greek language. That's not primary evidence. This is your bakhwas, what, what is it called in Urdu? Yeah. Nonsense. Nonsense. <laughs> right? Sorry, I don't speak Urdu that well, right? So what this is, this is just mere guesswork and assumptions. And you want to call it certainty? You want to say Quran uses the word Isa, like where did it come from? This is a revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
He's the one who's giving us the name. Okay? So the discussion we had last time is what is the name of God given to Musa as recorded in the Hebrew scripture? What did the Jewish authors say the name was? In the Christian tradition, what did it become? It became totally different. If the name was name of God, remember we're talking about names. The irony, the irony. We're talking about names, he's not going to reveal his name. He wants to be known as what? You know, toilet paper. Sorry, no, what was it he say? <laughs> paper was some kind of paper, right? Look at look at the irony. We're talking about names, but he wants to call by him a pseudonym. Other cartoon characters want to call by names. What name is more important? The name of the Son of God or the name of God? The name of God. If you ask him, what did the Greek writers call the name of God? Which was supposed to be the name given to Musa alayhi salam. They call him Ego Amy. Does it sound like Yahya Yashar Yahya? Does it sound like Ehe? It doesn't. So what happened? The Greek writers have been butchering, transforming, they've been mutilating, whatever, or even translating something totally different. So this is precisely the problem that we see with Christian evangelicals. They are not consistent. If you ask them, oh, before Abraham was I am, Christ is claiming to the name of God, I am. What was the name I am coming from? That's in English, right? What is the name in Greek? It says Ego Amy. Prin Abraham Geneste Ego Amy. The name Abraham is retained as Abraham. That's what you expect, proper names. If my name is Mansour and he goes and speaks to his Chinese friend, is he going to say, Cha 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 Cha, my name? Or I'm a Cha 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 Cha. Would you know who, who he's talking about? My name is Mansour. Even in Chinese, you can approximate my name to Mansour. You know, whatever, however they pronounce it, right? So that's the problem with looking at claims making being made by Christian evangelicals here or in the internet or in social media. This is the level of intellectual bankruptcy, I would say. Bankruptcy. Because if you have nothing certain and you use this as a standard and then you say, no, the Quran is not right in here, you haven't got any legs to stand up on yourself. You haven't got any certainty. Is the name Ego Amy that was given to Musa al Islam and Musa al Islam said, oh, who shall I call? Who shall I tell has sent me? And God spoke to him in Hebrew saying, Ego Amy. Would he even know what it is? So that's the level of dishonesty we are dealing with. Dishonesty and deception and trickery. So yes, when we are discussing with Christians, no wonder we don't waste time with these people. Do you know why he said 15 minutes today? It's precisely. Look, he went into a tangent. Oh, I'm going to say Islamic tradition and Prophet Muhammad I'm going to Ibn Ishaq, going to this. This is exactly what we see in Speaker's Corner. Instead of dealing with the evidence at hand, where is your evidence? From the primary sources, the name of his is Yeshua. You have none. You have some scholars think, well, I think it's this. And then when you give the same reference, which says, let me re repeat to you again so that we close this discussion once and for all. The same reference, which he used in evidence, it says, as a way of conclusion, it is worth summarizing the salient features of the debate about the origins of the Quranic form of Jesus' name. It is not certain that Jesus' original name was Eshua. It is not certain. Precisely my point. That's why I don't go about saying, I know what his name was. I believe Allah Islam used the name Isa Islam. I just go by that. Whether this is an Arabized form that the Arabs used to and they were familiar with Isa as a prophet by that name, I don't have a problem with that. But when they come along and say that is his original name, it's certain, when his own reference refutes him, may Allah guide us all. So, what can I say? We need to just, as a way of um, analyzing a proof text coming from these people, who, 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 are, who are claiming something against our tradition, all you need to do is what? Go to their proof text. Remember what happened used to be here? There was an American guy used to shout a lot, talking about Quranic manuscripts and Petra and Qibla. Jesus. Yeah? We all, we all, need, all we needed to do is to go back to his proof text and refute him because he doesn't say what it says. This is exactly the level these people, what we're dealing with. So, why is it not people? Any claims? Just verify yourself and you will see the answer is half there.
already. Okay? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh to my Muslim brothers and sisters.